The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. So we have been discussing Chapter 8, Aksara Brahma Yoga, Yoga of Imperishable Brahma. In Chapter 6, we have seen the techniques of meditation. And then the second segment of Bhagavad Gita, as we have discussed before, Bhagavan is now describing what to meditate upon. In Chapter 7, Gnana Vignana Yoga, Yoga of Knowledge and its Application, Bhagavan has given the knowledge about the Supreme Self. Bhagavan said, I have two prakritis, apara and para, my lower nature and my upper nature. In my lower nature you experience every day. My upper nature you experience, but do not recognize it. And then in the end of that chapter, Bhagavan has said that one who recognizing me in Adi Daivam, Adi Yagnam, and Adi Bhutam, in all these aspects, one who realized there is nothing but me, the Supreme, is pervading through all these manifestations. The reality remains reality, but the representation is nothing but the superimposition on the fundamental reality. The one who realizes this, such a person will come to my being. In other words, he will also become one with that supreme reality. He will recognize, he will identify with that supreme reality. And the terms Bhagavan used in that, Arjuna wanted to understand them. Arjuna said, explain all the six terms you mentioned. And he also mentioned that even Antakale, even at the last minute, someone recognizes this. Someone realizes that. He will also come to my being. Maybe the whole life he struggled through understanding it. But once he comes to that realization, and that may be the last minute, then also he comes to me. This is all confusing to Arjuna and to all of us. So Arjuna asked question on our behalf to Bhagavan to explain all these things you talked about. What are all the six terms and how one can achieve that at the time of death. So this is what we have been discussing in this chapter. Aksara Brahma Yoga, Yoga of Imperishable Brahma, is to define what Supreme Brahman is. So we have seen the definition so far of the six terms Bhagavan has described. The Brahman is the imperishable entity. That's the fundamental entity. That remains constant in all throughout any manifestation, any representation, any experience that you have. So at micro level, I realize that all that I am is that which I consider I. Everything else is a superimposition on me. I the father, I the brother, I the employer. All those are superimposition. They can only exist when I exist. When I am gone, none of those existences are possible. But once you one who recognizes this fact that the underlying reality is the consciousness, which creates this conscious awareness in me about my surrounding and about my own limited self. But all other things which are finite and which are perishable not me. So the last verse we have discussed, Bhagavan said, Antakale chamame vas maran muktva kalevaram ya prayati sa madhavam yati na asya tatra sansaya. There is no doubt that anyone who recognizes that all this representation which I see in this world, the world of plurality, is a superimposition 
on the supreme brahman he will also come to me how can that be possible so bhagwan actually clarifies in the verses alone that what it meant was if you come to the stage that you have come to the final realization there is no going back to that ignorance that you had before that i am this limited being but if i remain in that ignorance then i'll continue the journey in my ignorance yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tyajatyante kalevaram tam tamai vaiti kunteya sada tad bhava bhavita whatever you think in the last moment of whatever is being or state of existence that's the being you will go and that the existence you will get we have our day to day life experience that where will i go after this class is entirely dependent on my thought at that time i was thinking about going for shopping i'll do that on saturday night when i go to sleep i think about what i'm going to do tomorrow morning when i have a class tomorrow morning but sunday night when i go to sleep i don't think about gita class i think about my office so next morning i'll go to my office and this didn't come with a last minute thought this is a pattern which i have created in my life and that regulates how i think all throughout the week so i want to whoever at the last minute of that particular existence thinks about whatever thing or a being or existence that the existence he goes to in, in the next existence so that's a logical explanation of bhagwan ki how he antakale will work whatever you are thinking that's what you will become as you think so you become so now bhagwan gives a clear instruction to arjuna and says therefore tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mam anusmara yudhya cha it is very significant words because it clarifies lots of misconception about our religion bhagwan says therefore you think about me all the time so that you don't have to wait for what will be my thought at the last minute mam anusmara and yudhya and then engage in your duties engage in your battle do not give up what you are doing continue doing what you are doing live your life as you have planned but keep me in the background this knowledge this knowledge which i have given you in the last chapter that nothing exists other than my own self and everything else is nothing but my own representation when i see the world of objects and beings and material that's my lower prakriti in the when you realize when you know the knower is also my own prakriti the same supreme consciousness functioning through this limited body mind and intellect makes me a knower the bhagwan says tasmat sarveshu kalis all the time while you are doing your work doing your duties living your life keep that in the back of your mind that even though this world of plurality i'm experiencing this is singularity which is working through all this world of plurality mai arpita manah buddhihi naam eva esyasi asansayam if you offer your mind and intellect to me then you will come to me there is no doubt about it so the mind and intellect offering to him means mind and intellect should be rooted in that knowledge the constant background thought should be that even though i work in this world as an individual however i have no existence other than the existence of the supreme self my existence is only possible is dependent on his existence if that thought is constant in my mind the bhagwan said that that's a offering your mind to me the mind is not think is relying on the ego that which is identifying with the limited self so right now i'm rooted in my ego i clearly think i exist there is no doubt nobody can convince me that i do not exist but my existence is so unique that it is not related to other people's existence other things existence i exist in an island by myself 
and I'm relating to the other beings and other people as separate entities. I wanted if you remove the notion from your mind and plant a notion that I am manifestation of the same reality as everything else is, and then live your life, then you will come to me. There is no doubt about that. So then in the next verse, he said, how that is possible? So right now it seems it's impossible. Then how can I constantly think about Bhagavan? This is not to say that you have to call 24 hours to bhajan. If this thought in the background, just as in music, there's a shruti, at least in Indian music that I know. That there is a shruti which is playing on a tanpura, which regulates all the music which is going on in that concert or in that performance. In the same way, that thought should be a shruti in my thinking. It's all other thoughts. When I'm dealing with the world outside, I'm in my business, I'm in my, my relationship, that thought should be a shruti in my thinking. And then if I work in this world, it will be possible that I will see him in everything, in every being. In the last moment, because it has now become my nature, the underlying thought in all my thoughts that that thought will be prominent in the time of my death. But once it is possible, abhyasa yogi yuktena, chetasa na anyagamina, paramam purusam divyam yati partha anu chintayan, with the mind not having any other th- na anyagamina. In other words, the basic fundamental thought that I exist, everything I starts with I. As soon as I wake up, the very first thought is, I woke up. I am going to my office. There is nothing that starts without I in it. If that I, if I replace from this limited identification to the unlimited identification, Bhagavan said, it will be possible. But you have to do it abhyasa yoga yukthen, constantly thinking about that. No anyagamina, no other identification. That should be the basic thought. Then I will have relationships. I will be relating to the world outside. I'll be conscious about myself, but I'll be aware of the world outside. So there is a difference between consciousness and awareness. So we get conscious agents are aware of the world outside. So when I am in waking state, I'm aware of my waking world. I have conscious awareness of my waking world. When I'm in dream, I'm consciously aware of my dream world. But when I'm in deep sleep, I'm conscious, but there is no awareness. Paramam Purusham Divyam. You constantly think about that supreme divine being that you are. That which is your real nature. If you do that, then you you'll certainly will come to me at the time of your death, at the time when you give up the ego completely, when your ego dies, then you will become one with me. And then the next verse, which is very significant verse, because now Bhagwan is fulfilling his promise that I'll tell you what to meditate upon. So this verse puts everything together in how to think about the Supreme Self that we are trying to identify with. Right now, it's very easy for me to identify with the limited self. I'm not a problem. I, this is me. This is my body. I will never have to think about it. I'm in a constant state of samadhi about who I am. I am this limited body, this mind, this intellect. To change that, Bhagavan has given a clear description of the Supreme Being. Kavim Puranam Anusasitaram. The eight aspects in which you can think about the Supreme Self. The first is Kavim, the all-knowing being, that omniscient being that everyone thinks about. Omniscient doesn't mean that that person or that entity knows everyone's thoughts at the same time. Swamiji says actually that will be a punishment to anybody. I have enough trouble just knowing my own thoughts. If I know everybody else's thoughts, it will become very difficult to handle. Kavim, that omniscient being, 
he knows everything in other words whenever i focus my ability to know then i'll know that bhagwan is all pervading all the knowing is happening in his being only the word kavi in our vernacular language kavi is the poet but in vedic literature kavi is the seer the one who sees the reality all those rishis have composed poetry to describe what they've seen and their vision so they were called kavis now the same word we use for any poet who creates poetry puranam ancient it is fundamental there's nothing before that it is the ancient there is nothing before that means he is fundamental you cannot reduce him down to something else anusasitaram who is the ruler of everything in myself my consciousness is the ruler that consciousness is the king of all my perceptions my experiences my knowledge if that consciousness is not there i will have no perception no cognition no, no knowledge therefore the consciousness is the ruler in my own being so is the supreme consciousness the ruler of all the knowing that happening in this world anoho aniyam sam it is smaller than atom atom in our normal language we consider as the basic building block of this nature this world but what is it that entity is even subtler than that whatever this fundamental building block you think of with the anu parmanu atom particles waves but once a consciousness is subtler than that i the supreme is subtler than that anusmare deho remembers sarvasya dhataram who is the supporter of all beings my being is supported by my consciousness your being by your consciousness so so on and so forth it's infinite all the beings and things are supported by the consciousness achinte rupam when i try to conceptualize that in my mind it is not possible so if i start conceptualizing bhagwan is a bhagwan also with the two hands or four hands and bhagwan said that's not my roop my swarupa is achinte roopam in other words you cannot conceptualize consciousness we can conceptualize a material representation of a consciousness but not consciousness itself aditya varnam that if i can if i cannot conceptualize it if i can think about it that means i'll be ignorant about it bhagwan says no that is not the case this is something completely different it is not that i'm ignorant about myself i'm just aware of myself i cannot conceptualize myself without conceptualizing my body my mind my intellect i am still very aware of myself that is aditya varnam it does not require any other knowledge to know me just as you do not need any other light to see the sun sun's own light makes it possible for me to see sun the same way to recognize my own self no other awareness is necessary to be aware of the city to be aware of of my surrounding i need other perceptions but to know myself i don't need anything therefore it is tamasah parastha it is beyond ignorance it is beyond darkness beyond darkness sun is without darkness wherever there is sun there cannot be any darkness it opposite of darkness is sunlight in the same way my existence my knowledge about my own self is opposite of my ignorance about my own self so tamasah parastha now we'll stop right here if you find this podcast helpful please support it by donating any amount by going to the episodes website at neelbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org thank you om sarve bhavantu sukhina 
सर्वेस्तुरामयाद्रा पश्य कचि दुख भाग भवे ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ